What's up? Welcome to Backend Stuff. I'm Jacob Blitzo here to help you build tech for the future. Think about scalability, reliability, and cost. <laughs> if you want to learn how to build scalable production ready APIs, hit that subscribe button now. This is episode nine in Elixir Basics. Today we are diving into control flow structures. What are control flow structures? They allow us to compare a given value against a pattern. So we have if, unless, conditional end case structures to work with. Let's go ahead and pull up our terminal. And let's CD to our desktop and create a new project. So mix new, and we will call this one control underscore flow. All right, let's go ahead and CD into control flow directory and let's get our shell, our Elixir shell up and running. So IEX space dash capital S space mix. And I need to make this bigger for you guys. Sorry about that. All right, so let's go ahead and start with if and unless. So these are useful when you only need to check for one condition. So we can do things like if, and then you're always going to check on a Boolean. So like if it's true, do something. So we'll say if this is true, Blork says hi. Okay. And then we'll just end this statement. And when I hit enter, it's obviously true because I wrote true. And then we see that Blork says hi. So unless works the same way as if, but opposite. So if we went like unless true do, and then we'll say this will not show end. So we get a nil because unless is actually looking for false is not true. So we'd have to do something like this unless false do this will show and then we'll end this statement and there we go so unless is if to be honest you'll probably rarely use unless but you should know about them also if if false do blork won't say hi and so if false statement's not true it doesn't know what to do both these also support else blocks. So we can do things like this. So if false do, and then we can say that uh, Blork won't say hi because it's false, right? And then we can throw an else in and Blork left without saying goodbye. And that would be sad, right? So if it's false, we're not going to see Blork won't say hi, so it's going to hit the else block. And there we go. We see the else block works. And unless works the same way as if, so we can do unless true do. And the same thing, Blork won't say hi. And then we can do the else block and say Blork left without saying goodbye. And that would be upsetting again. And so we see that unless works the same way with the else block. And we should probably say, like, I would say it's a good time to discuss um, variable scoping. So if any variable is changed inside an if a case or any similar construct, um, the declaration or change are only available inside of the construct, all right? So if we did something like this, like x equals one, okay? So we can call x, we see that it's equal one. So if we do something like if true do x equals x plus one, and then we return x and hit end, it's going to return two, right? But now if I call x outside, of that structure or construct, it it's still going to equal one because it didn't change. It created a new variable that was only accessible inside of the if block. And anything like uh, like when we get into case or the conditional, they all work the same way. So if you manipulate a variable within that, you're not going to have access to it outside of that block. 
All right, let's open up our project and write some code. File, open folder. All right, let's drag that over here. And let's go ahead and expand the lib directory and open our control flow.ex file. And let's delete this hello world function. We're not going to use it. We're writing our own. So let's make a function that checks max load of Blork's spacecraft. We can do something like def, let's see, check max load, and it'll take an argument load, and then we will. So within do and end, let's do a realistic if statement here. And what's cool with uh, if statements, we can also do a shorthand version of them. In the, in the shell, we're doing the longhand, and we can also write them like this. So if our argument load is less than 55 pounds, comma, do, colon, we can return a string that says it's safe to fly. And we can even do an else block in the same line with a comma, else, colon, and then we can return a string too heavy to fly, too heavy to fly. Well, that's pretty cool, right? So let's save this, pull up our terminal. Let's recompile that code. And if we do, uh, let's see, what did I call this? I forgot, control flow. I forgot the name of the, there we go. I forgot the name of the .ex file. <laughs> so control flow dot check flying load. And let's see, if we pass in a value that is less than 55, so let's do 53, it's safe to fly. And now if we do 55 or higher, Ooh, too heavy to fly. Let's rewrite this exact same example, but with an unless. So if I just do a command forward slash, it'll comment out that code. And we can do unless load is less than 55 do. And it's just reverse of what we just did. So if load is less than 55 is false. It's a little confusing, honestly. That's why you'll probably rarely use unless, but now it, if it's false, it's too heavy to fly. So we're just kind of reversing our logic here. And then we're doing our else colon safe to fly. And then we can save it and let's go back to our terminal, do a recompile. And now if we do the same thing and we call check max load and pass in 55, it's too heavy to fly. It works the same way, but a little different way. And I have a typo in there. Fly does not have any on that. What if we want to check different conditions and find the first one that doesn't evaluate to nil or false? Well, then we would want to use a conditional. Let's go back into VS Code and let's write our first condition. Let's, uh, I don't know, let's write a function to check fuel level. Lork needs to know how much fuel is in his flying saucer. So check underscore, whoop, underscore fuel level, and we'll just pass in a percentage, right? Make it nice and easy for us. And now inside this, we want a condition statement. So we want to do C-O-N-D, cond, do, and inside of this, you can do comparisons. So we can take our percentage, and if it equals 100, we will return a string full tank. All right. And we can just go down the list. So we can say if percentage is greater than 75, we can return three quarters of a tank. All right. And let's just do percentage is greater than... 49 will return half tank. Oop, half tank, there we go. And then if percentage is greater than 24, we'll return quarter tank. So conditionals are the equivalent to using else if in other, like in many other imperative languages. So let's go ahead and save this and pull up our shell again. Let's do a recompile. And now if we do control flow dot check fuel level, check fuel level. And if we pass in 100 and hit enter, we get full tank. That's pretty cool. 
And then if we pass in, let's pass in, I don't know, 25. And we get quarter tank. Let's say we pass in one. If all the conditions return nil or false, we're going to get a condition clause error. So for this reason, you usually want to put a final condition in that is equal to true. So there will always be a match. And then that kind of, you know, make sure we have all the cases handled. And all we would do here is underneath our last condition that we're checking, you just put in true and then you can return, you know, you could return an error here or just you're controlling it instead of letting, um, the instead of letting Elixir or the compiler throw an error. So we're going to just return a string called empty tank. And so if all these conditions are false or nil, we'll hit true and true is always true and it will return empty tank. So now if we recompile and send in fuel level one, boom, empty tank is returned. Okay, so case allows us to compare a given value against many patterns. Clauses in a case expression are also evaluated from top to bottom, just like the conditional, until a match is found. So let's go back into VS Code and we can do just a quick example with a case statement. Whoops, sorry, moving all over. We can do something like def air code check and we can pass in a value and then do. So with this, with a case, it's like conditional, but we're taking a value and doing pattern matching. So we essentially, so type in case and if you hit enter here, it will auto complete and keep our cursor right after case because we want to pass in our value that we're doing pattern matching against, which is value. So we can do something like this. If value, if value equals 200, 200, we would return okay. If value equals 201, we could return created. So we're just using very common rest, restful API error code definitions here. And then if we did a 204, uh, we can return a no content. So this is pretty cool. And with this one, just like we need a statement to cover all of our cases, we need something that will always be true or always match. We'll just do an underscore and then a dash greater than, and we can return a no. So if we don't cover all the errors, we can just say, oh, hey, we don't cover this error. It's unknown, but it's still handled. So let's save this and go back to our shell, do a recompile. And now if we do a control flow dot error code check, and we pass in a 200, we get our okay. All right, pretty sweet. If we pass in our 204, no content, and then what happens if we passed in like a 400? No, a 404. It's an unknown error. So that is really sweet, but it gets cooler. All right, let's go back into VS Code. We can also use guards. And with pattern matching, we can do something like this. We can do n, when, and then we can do a type check. So we can do is integer. We want to always make sure that our value is an integer because we're looking for error codes and we'll pass in our value n and we want to make sure n is greater than 299 or we're going to return that it's an error. So anything uh, greater than the 200s is an error and we want to handle that and we don't want to get more specific than that. We just know it's an error right now. So what's happening is we're using pattern matching. So value is being inserted into this variable n. And then we're evaluating it in a guard, which is really powerful and pretty dang awesome. Let's go back to our terminal and let's recompile this. And now let's call control flow dot air code check. And now if we pass in, sorry, I hit a double, I had an enter there too quick. And let's pass in our 404 now and we'll get our error atom back. So that's really cool. We just handled that. We didn't get an unknown. 
But now if we pass in something that's not an integer, say an atom, but we can pass in atom and we get our unknown. And that hit our unknown clause because it wasn't an integer. Let's step up the complexity a little bit to show how powerful we can make this. We can take our equipment detail tuple that we used in the pattern matching episode, pass it in as a single object, and we can use pattern matching to assign it to variables in a case structure. So let's go ahead and go back to VS Code and let's create a new function. Whoop. All right, let's do a def equipment underscore check and we're gonna pass in our tuple object called equipment tuple, uh, closing parentheses, do. So here we can do a case statement and let's say we wanna check a piece of equipment. And if you remember our tuple, we had uh, the first value was the weight, the weight value. The second value was the unit type. So it was like kilograms or pounds and we made that an atom. And the third was the quantity of the item. So how many we had. So what if we wanted to make sure no individual item weighed more than 16 kilograms? Let's do something that can check that, all right? So we can do case, hit enter, and we're going to pass in our equipment tuple variable. And then we come down here, and now with pattern matching, we can assign variables automatically. So since we know our tuple has three values in it, we can just pull them out automatically with curly braces. And the first one is weight. The second one is unit type. And the third one is quantity. And then we can do a guard. So we want to make sure not one single item weighs more than 16 kilograms. So we'll, we can do something like when weight is less than 16, we can do something, but it's 16 kilograms. So we want to do an and make sure the unit type equals our atom of kg. But we also have quantity. So what if the quantity, we want to just make sure no individual item weighs more than 16 kilograms. So let's divide our weight by quantity. So that's pretty cool. So remember if we had snacks, we had like 16 of them. We just wanna make sure one snack doesn't weigh more than 16 kilograms. And then we can come over here and return an atom of equipment cleared. So we did an equipment check. What do we do though if our unit type is pounds? We're gonna to have to do a little bit, a little bit of a conversion, right? So we can take our same thing. Let's pattern match into you know, weight, unit type, and quantity, uh, and curly braces when weight, oh wait, no, weight is, in, weight is in kilograms, or it would be in pounds in this case. So when unit type equals pounds, we have to do some sort of conversion. So dash greater than symbol. And if you remember with guards, the expression must be peer and it can't mutate state. So we can't call a function that in the guard expression. And if we have to do a conversion, we are gonna have to call our convert kilograms to pound function. So let's go ahead and above our equipment check, let's just rewrite our conversion. So our convert underscore kg underscore two underscore pound. And then we'll take our kilogram value comma do colon and then we'll take our kg value times 2.2 so that's our quick conversion but since we can't call a function inside a guard we're just going to have to do our guard to check for unit type right and then inside of this this case pattern match so if it's pounds we can do something like we can add an if statement in here so we could do if convert kilograms uh, we can pass in our weight, close parentheses, divide it by our quantity like above. I spelled quantity wrong. Let's get rid of a T. Okay, so we can divide by quantity and then make sure it's less than 16 kilograms again. And we'll do the shorthand version. So comma, do, colon. We can do equip, oh, return uh, an atom, equipment, 
underscore cleared. And then what, so what happens if there's an else? What happens if it's greater than 16? So comma else colon, and then just let's return an atom fail. So that's pretty cool. We just did an if statement inside of a case statement. And then let's uh, go ahead and put our last pattern matching, you know, our default case. So if we get through all this and nothing matches anything, we can just return failed because it doesn't fit any of our checks. I'm just getting rid of that extra return there. Let's save it and go back to our terminal and do a recompile. And then let's do our control flow dot equipment check. And we need to pass in a tuple of weight. So let's pass in 15, 15 kilograms. The type is kilograms and the quantity is one. Close off that tuple, hit the closing parentheses, hit enter, equipment cleared. That is so cool. What happens if we keep it 15, but change the unit type to pounds and hit enter? It failed. So that's really cool. So it did our conversion check and ended up being more than 16 or 15 kilograms. All right, so let's make this, what is less? So 2.2, we have to be, if we pass in six pounds, it should, nope, my math is not good. Five pounds, nope, four. Okay, I think we have a problem with our logic. Let's go back to our code and check this out. So let's see if, so we're converting our weight times 2.2, and if the divided by quantity has to be less than 16 kilograms, equipment cleared or it fails. So, oh, my unit type is, I'm passing in LB and I'm looking for LBS. So get rid of an S on line 36. Let's save it. Let's go back into our shell and recompile. All right, and now let's try this. And there we go, equipment cleared. And then let's go ahead and just make sure it fails if it's too heavy and it fails, which is really sweet. And then what happens if it doesn't match anything? So if we get rid of this tuple and maybe we just pass in a single number, we get failed because it didn't match any of our patterns and it hit our default case and return failed. And just to show that it is hitting this case, be like, let's, instead of failed, we'll say unknown, save it, go back to our terminal, recompile, and then boom, unknown. So it hit our unknown case. So we can do a lot of really cool stuff with control flow structures. And with that being said, it is challenge time. And as always, write documentation for all of our functions and write tests for our functions. The hard thing is I want you to, for our equipment check, I want you to make sure, I want you to add type checks. So I want you to make sure that weight is always a number, that unit type is always an atom, and that quantity is always an integer. So it's not too hard. You don't have to write a lot of code. You just have to make equipment check more solid. We don't want errors to get through our code. As always, if you need help or want to check out the solutions, check out that GitHub link in the description. And if you have more questions or just wanna hang out and chat, join my Discord server backend stuff. That link is also in the description. If you wanna learn how to build scalable production ready APIs, hit that subscribe button now. See you next time.